immunoglobulin A vasculitis or Henek-Schulein Berbera by Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud, National Heart Institute, Egypt. Please, my dear colleagues, like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Immunoglobulin A vasculitis or Henek-Schulein Berbera is defined as acute autoimmune small vessel vasculitis mediated through immunoglobulin A. The inflammation involving the small vessels of skin, kidneys, GIT, joints, while less commonly CNS and lung vessels are affected. The disease is named after two German physicians, Dr. Johann Schonelein and his student Edward Hinock, who contributed in the description of the disease. Epidemiologic features of immunoglobulin A vasculitis. Immunoglobulin A vasculitis is the most common systemic vasculitis among children less than 10 years. In every 100,000 child, 10 to 20 are affected yearly. Adolescents and adults are less commonly affected than children. For each girl affected, there is two boys are affected, while in adults, male to female ratio is equal. Etiology of Immunoglobulin A Vasculitis The etiology of immunoglobulin A vasculitis is thought to be multifactorial. Number of different causes interplay together. On the top of which is the genetic predisposition. As it was observed, increased risk of immunoglobulin A vasculitis in patient carrying human leukocyte antigen B35 and DRB1 asterixis 01 alleles. Infections may precede immunoglobulin A vasculitis in 70% of cases. Whether upper respiratory tract infection or GIT infection. Number of infectious pathogens are involved, whether bacterial as group A beta streptococci, which is the most common, Salmonella, Shigella, or Brucella, or whether viral infection as adenovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, or COVID-19 virus. Immunoglobulin A vasculitis may be preceded by exposure to drugs as penicillins, quinidine, or exposure to vaccines as typhoid and paratyphoid or COVID-19 vaccine. In some Patients with immunoglobulin A vasculitis exposure to food, cold temperature, insect bites may precede the disease. Pathophysiology The pathophysiology of immunoglobulin A vasculitis is not fully understood. However, Immunoglobulin A plays a significant role. As we can see here in the slide, two immunoglobulin A molecules join together through the J chain and the secretory component. Two subclasses of immunoglobulin A are present in human immunoglobulin A1 
and immunoglobulin A2, which are different from each other in the structure of their hinge region and in number of glycosylation sites. Immunoglobulin A1 is more common in serum than immunoglobulin A2, while in mucosal tissues both are nearly equal. In the presence of the above mentioned etiologic causes, variation in the activity or expression of critical enzymes which catalyze the O glycosylation process of immunoglobulin A1 in beta cells may lead to deficiency of galactase in immunoglobulin A1. This galactase deficient immunoglobulin A1 is identified as antigen by the immune system. So, IgG or IgA autoantibodies are expressed against that galactase deficient immunoglobulin A1. Leads to circulating immune complexes, which deposited in the small blood vessel wall. The deposition of immune complexes into the endothelial lining of vessel wall leads to attraction of different inflammatory cells, which secrete interleukin-8. Interleukin-8 induced neutrophils, chemotaxis, and macrophag phagocytosis. Then neutrophils infiltrate the tissue sites and activation of complement factors C3 and C4. As a whole result, inflammatory change occur in the small vessel wall of skin, GIT, kidney, and CNS. Clinical picture. Typically, IgA vasculitis has a prodrome of fever, headache, and anorexia. After the prodrome, a lot of symptoms may develop. Characteristic rash in nearly 100% of cases. Abdominal pain and vomiting in 35 to 85% of cases. Joint pain in 60 to 84% of cases. Subcutaneous edema in 20 to 50% of cases. Scrotal edema in 2 to 35% of cases. And the blood stools. Skin manifestation. Inflammation of the small blood vessels of the skin in patients with immunoglobulin A vasculitis leads to the characteristic rash in the form of palpable berbera and petechi which may change to become bolus or necrotic the rash is non prurotic affecting buttocks and lower limbs mainly but upper limbs and the trunk can be also affected the rash mainly on the extensor surfaces of the limbs. Initially, the color of the rash is red, then purple, and finally rusted color before fade away. Inflammation of the small blood vessels of the skin leads to fluid leak and subcutaneous edema, particularly in hands, ankle, and feet. This common finding at the onset of the disease. Scrotal edema also was described. Gastrointestinal manifestation 
IgA mesenteric vasculitis can present with vomiting, colicky abdominal pain, which worsened by food, diarrhea with a gross or occult blood in stool, or hematemesis. Joints affection in patients with IgA vasculitis due to immune complexes deposition is described as arthralgia or arthritis, which is transient and non-destructive. Knees, ankles, hands, and feet joints are most commonly affected. If inflammation involves CNS vessels, Patient can present with behavioral changes, headache, ataxia, seizures, and if inflammation severe with vessel necrosis, intracranial hemorrhage can occur. Immune complexes deposition in peripheral nerves can result in mononeuropathy or paninuropathy such as gillian barre syndrome. Testicles can also inflame in 14% of males presenting with pain and swelling. Renal manifestations of IgA vasculitis Due to antibody-mediated destruction of the glomerular basement membrane, some renal manifestation can occur, like hematuria, proteinuria, nephrotic syndrome, nephritic syndrome, and finally, renal failure. In 80% of patients, kidney involvement become apparent within the first four weeks of the beginning of the disease. Luckily, 2-5% of patients progress to end-stage renal disease. Cardiopulmonary manifestations of patients with IgA vasculitis are rarely prescribed. In heart, if cardiac vasculitis occurred, patients may be present with MI or myocarditis. This pathology specimen showing necrotizing leukocytoclastic vasculitis of a small atrial vessel. In lungs, if inflammation of the pulmonary vessels with necrosis occurred, patient may be present with pulmonary hemorrhage. Complications About one-third of patients with IgA vasculitis may experience relapse of the disease. Other patients may have intersusception GIT bleeding, bowel infarction or perforation, CNS bleeding, MI or pulmonary hemorrhage, and finally, the renal complication which represent the most common cause of mortality in patients with IgA vasculitis like CKD or chronic renal failure. At the end of IgA vasculitis clinical picture, we should remember the classic tetrad of the disease, which includes number one, palpable perbra, number two, arthralgia or arthritis, number three, gastrointestinal involvement, and finally, number four, glomerulonephritis. Differential diagnosis. Before diagnosing patients with IgA vasculitis, some disease conditions to be considered due to clinical similarity with IgA vasculitis. For example, number one, thrombotic thrombocytopenic barbara. The patient had low platelet count, while platelet count is normal in IgA vasculitis. Number two, hypersensitivity vasculitis. The patient had characteristic articarial lesions like wheels with different distribution. 
Skin biopsy is diagnostic, which shows lack of galactase deficient immunoglobulin A1 complexes. Number three, isolated IgA nephropathy. Patient presents with renal manifestation with lack of other system affection, and renal biopsy is diagnostic. Number four, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. The patient had low platelet count, high D dimer, low fibrinogen concentration, and prolonged prothrombin time. These labs are normal in patients with IgA vasculitis. And finally, primary antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. The patient had recurrent thrombotic event and recurrent abortions with presence of circulating antiphospholipid antibodies in circulation. Investigations. Laboratory investigations in IgA vasculitis like CBC to check platelet count, which is normal, to exclude thrombocytopenia, thrombin time and partial thromboblastin time to exclude coagulopathy. Antinuclear antibody and rheumatoid factor to exclude other autoimmune disease. Sometimes we can measure serum immunoglobulin A levels, which may increase in about 40 to 60 percent of patients. Serum urea and creatinine to exclude nephritis. Urine analysis in patients with glomerulonephritis show different degrees of hematuria and proteinuria with granular and red blood cell casts. Skin biopsy. Skin lesions of patients with IgA vasculitis can be examined histopathologically which show typical leukocytoclastic vasculitis with or without fibronoid necrosis. As we can see here in image A. Or we can examine the lesion under direct immunofluorescence, which show very vascular IgA deposits, as we can see in image B. Renal biopsy. Glomeruli under light microscopy show increasing mesangial matrix and cellularity. While under immunofluorescence microscopy show increased mesangial IgA deposits. Renal biopsy is useful in histologic grading of IgA vasculitis nephritis, where nephritis is assigned into six grades. Grade 1 or minimally changes, when there is minor glomerular abnormality. Grade 2, there is mesangial proliferation without crescents, which can be focal segmental or diffuse. Grade 3, there is mesangial proliferation with less than 50% crescent. Grade 4, there is mesangial proliferation with 50 to 75% crescent. Grade 5, there is mesangial proliferation with more than 75% crescent. And finally, grade 6, which is membrane proliferative glomerulonephritis. Diagnosis of IgA vasculitis. There are two diagnostic classification criteria for diagnosis of IgA vasculitis. 
the first one is the European League against rheumatism, which published in 2010. In the European criteria, presence of palpable vertebra or petechi with lower limb predominance without thrombocytopenia or coagulopathy is a mandatory criteria. With, with at least one of the following. One, diffuse abdominal pain of acute onset. Two, histopathologic finding of leukocytoclastic vasculitis or proliferative glomerulonephritis with predominant IgA deposition. Three, acute arthritis or arthralgia in any joint. Four, kidney involvement like hematuria or pretonuria. Sensitivity is 100% and specificity is 87% in the European criteria. The second classification criteria for diagnosis for IgA vasculitis is the American College of Rheumatology criteria. Two of the following are essential for diagnosis of IgA vasculitis. Age less than 20 years, palpable vertebra, acute abdominal pain, biopsy showing granulocytes in the wall of the small arterioles or venules, sensitivity and specificity of the criteria is around 87%. IgA vasculitis treatment and management. Treatment of IgA vasculitis remains mainly supportive, as there is no form of therapy has been found to shorten the duration of the disease to any significant degree. Treatment of extra renal manifestations of IgA vasculitis. The treatment of extra renal manifestations is usually supportive with adequate hydration, balanced diet, and avoiding unnecessary drugs. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be administered for joint symptoms. Dapson, which is oral antibiotic, has been used to treat associated berberas and arthralgias. Sometimes glucocorticoids can be used. So, what are the indications of glucocorticoids for treatment of extra renal manifestations? Number one, severe abdominal pain not responding to usual measures. Two, substantial GIT hemorrhage. Three, severe soft tissue edema. Four, severe scrotal edema. 5. Neurological system involvement. 6. Intrapulmonary hemorrhage. Treatment of renal manifestations of IgA vasculitis. If the kidneys are involved in the disease, such involvement can be mild in the form of microscopic hematuria or number resistant mild or moderate proteinuria. In such situation, follow up and evaluation in three to six months interval is required. If renal injury is significant, such as in Zeus with severe proteinuria or impaired GFR or persistent proteinuria, Renal biopsy is indicated, and according to the results of renal biopsy in combination with protein-creatinine ratio, nephritis can be classified into mild, moderate, or severe. In mild nephritis, where BCR less than 100 mg per millimole, the first line of treatment is oral corticosteroids, while the second line 
is as a cyobrin, mycophenolate mofetil, pulsed methyl prednisolone. In moderate nephritis, when BCR more than 100 milligram per millimole, but less than 200, with presence of less than 50% decreasence and renal dysfunction, oral prednisolone is the first line of treatment. As a cyobrine, mycophenolate mofetil, or IV cyclophosphamide, may be also added to the first or the second line. When nephritis is severe, as in BCR more than 250 milligram per millimole, with the presence of more than 50% decreases and renal dysfunction, IV cyclophosphamide with pulsed methyl prednisolone and or oral corticosteroid is the first line of treatment to induce remission. Lower doses of, of corticosteroid combined with azacyobrine or mycophenolate mofetil for maintenance therapy. In all cases of nephritis, ACE inhibitors or ARBIS are indicated. Biological therapy in IgA vasculitis. Rituximab is an anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody that induces beta cell depletion and was noted to be successful treatment in severe refractory chronic IgA vasculitis. Eclosumab is a humanized anti-C5 monoclonal antibody which showed anti-proteinuric effect in IgA nephritis. Plasmapheresis By removing the abnormal immunoglobulin A from the circulation, plasmapheresis delaying the progression of kidney disease. In severe immunoglobulin A vasculitis, plasmapheresis, in addition to steroids, improves patient outcome. At the end, thank you for watching. I hope the presentation was useful. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video. Goodbye.